This museum is devoted to the history of commercial and general aviation in Southern Nevada. Because it's inside of the McCarran International Airport, the museum is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The museum's main portion is located on the second level esplanade above the baggage claim area with additional displays and exhibits throughout the airport. Opened as the International Hotel in 1969 by Kurt Krikorian, this hotel hosted an astounding 58 consecutive sellout concerts by Elvis Presley. After an opening night performance by Barbra Streisand, Presley began his stint of sellout shows, breaking all Las Vegas attendance records. He continued to play here throughout the early and mid-1970s. Reportedly, when Elvis was playing, one out of every two visitors to Vegas saw his show. In August 1970, the hotel was the main stage location for his concert documentary, Elvis, That's the Way It Is. While performing in Las Vegas, Elvis lived in the penthouse suite, room 3000, of the 30th floor. His final performance here was in December 1976. Leon Spinks shocked the boxing world here on February 15, 1978, when he beat Muhammad Ali in a 15-round decision to become the world heavyweight champ. The bout held at the Hilton Pavilion, only the 8th pro fight for Spinks, who had won a gold medal at the 1976 Summer Olympics. Expecting it to be an easy victory, Ali did not train hard. Spinks, who became a notorious party animal, did not train hard for the rematch and Ali, at 37, would beat him to become the first three-time heavyweight champion. Spinks would largely disappear from the boxing scene to keep a low profile. This sign, designed by neon artist Betty Willis and erected in 1959, has become a world-famous symbol of Las Vegas. It was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2009. This church, a replica of an Old West church, is the oldest existing structure on the Strip. Many celebrities have said their I do's here, including Judy Garland, Cindy Crawford, and Angelina Jolie. It is also where Elvis and Anne Margaret recited their vows in Viva Las Vegas. The church has survived so long by repeatedly moving. Originally part of the Last Frontier Hotel, located on the highway that would eventually become the Vegas Strip, it moved to the Hacienda Hotel in 1978, into its current location in 1996. The church is listed on the National Registry of Historical Places, the only such place on the Strip with this honor. This district was named for Las Vegas pioneer and the former owner of the First State Bank, John S. Park. Park arrived in the city in 1905 and became president of the First State Bank after starting out as a teller. He also organized and became the first president of the Consolidated Power and Telephone Company, which became the Southern Nevada Power Company. The historic district includes the subdivisions of Park Place Edition and Vega Verde Edition. The houses in the area were primarily built between the 1930s and 1950s. This hotel and casino opened in 1956 and was owned and operated by Warren Doc Bailey. The resort, which featured a miniature golf course and a go-kart track, was two miles south of the nearest Las Vegas Strip resort and had its own airline. This isolation meant that guests often spent all their time and money there. 
After Doc's death, the casino was run by his widow, Judy Bailey, who was the first woman to oversee a strip gaming operation. The casino was involved in some scandal during the 1980s that was later fictionalized from Martin Scorsese's film Casino. The Hacienda was imploded in 1996 and the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino was built on the former location. Opened in 1957, this resort has undergone several expansions and renovations. It is one of four located at the Tropicana Las Vegas Boulevard intersection, which has the most hotel rooms of any intersection in the world. In 1973, the Tropicana added the Superstar Theater, which was built to the specifications of singer Sammy Davis Jr., who used the venue as his showcase. The hotel was featured in the Elvis film Viva Las Vegas, as well as the James Bond film Diamonds Are Forever. In February 2010, the Las Vegas Mob Experience opened, featuring a thousand unique artifacts and recreations that tell the tale of organized crime in Las Vegas. In the 1970s, suspecting mafia activity at the Tropicana in Las Vegas, the FBI launched an extensive investigation dubbed Operation Strawman. From wiretaps, the FBI learned that Joe Agosto was sending cash from the Tropicana to mob leaders in Kansas City, Chicago, Cleveland, and Milwaukee. On Valentine's Day of 1979, the FBI conducted a raid on the Tropicana after they learned of a link between Kansas City's Sevilla mob family and gaming executive Carl Thomas. In 1981, a grand jury indicted Agosco, Thomas, Kansas City mob boss Nick Sevilla, and other members of the Kansas City mob. They were convicted in 1983. Boxer Mike Tyson's career took one of its strangest turns here in June 1997. With 40 seconds left in the third round of his rematch with Evander Holyfield, he bit Holyfield's right ear, drawing blood. The crowd at the MGM Grand Hotel gasped as blood trickled down Holyfield's chin. The referee warned Tyson, but a few seconds later Tyson bit Holyfield again and was disqualified from the match. As a result of the biting, Tyson's boxing license was revoked for more than a year and he was fined $3 million. Originally opened as a Tally Ho in 1962 by Edwin Lowe, inventor of the game Yahtzee, the hotel changed owners in 1966. It subsequently underwent $3 million in renovations and was rethemed as the Aladdin. Thus began half a century of unsuccessful business ventures, criminal investigations, and financial disasters that led the property to be known as the Vegas Jinx. The original building was demolished in 1998. It was replaced by a new, grander Aladdin, but that too went bankrupt in 2003. A high point in the Aladdin's history was the marriage of Elvis and Priscilla Presley, which took place there on May 1, 1967. The property is currently occupied by Planet Hollywood, Las Vegas. This Roman Empire-themed hotel and casino opened in 1966. On December 31, 1967, Evil Knievel unsuccessfully tried to jump over the hotel's water fountain with his motorcycle. Caesars has hosted Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland, Liberace, Elton John, Cher, Celine Dion, David Copperfield, and Jerry Seinfeld. It has been widely featured in television and film, including Hell's Angels on Wheels, The Electric Horseman, History of the World Part 1, Rain Man, Showgirls, The Sopranos, Ocean's Eleven, and The Hangover.
gangster Benjamin Bugsy Siegel opened the Pink Flamingo Hotel and Casino on December 26, 1946. It was the third resort on the Strip and is the oldest still in operation. The hotel was named after Siegel's girlfriend, Virginia Hill, who, because of her red hair and long legs, was nicknamed the Flamingo. Siegel would later be killed at Hill's Beverly Hills Mansion. His fourth floor suite at the Flamingo was a virtual fortress with its own elevator, steel reinforced walls, and secret passageways. The property is now known as the Flamingo Las Vegas and is owned and operated by Caesars Entertainment Corp. The Sands opened on December 14, 1952 and, in its heyday, defined cool on the Las Vegas Strip. In 1956, Elvis Presley saw Freddie Bell and the Bell Boys perform the song Hound Dog at the Sands and decided to record the track himself. The Sands is also famous for its legendary Copa Room, the site of the 1960 Summit at the Sands, where Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Joey Bishop, and Peter Lawford performed on stage together. After the performance, they would forever be known as the Rat Pack. The Sands was also used as a film location for the original Ocean's Eleven. The hotel was imploded in 1996. Wilbur Clark began construction on the Desert Inn, the fifth resort on the Strip, in 1946, but he ran out of money. Mo Dalitz of the Cleveland Mafia took over, and the hotel finally opened on April 24, 1950. The inn featured an 18-hole golf course and the famous Crystal Showroom, which hosted Frank Sinatra, Bobby Darin, Tony Bennett, and was featured in the movie Ocean's Eleven. In 1966, the eccentric billionaire Howard Hughes, who had been living on the ninth floor, purchased the resort for $7 million. Steve Wynn purchased it in 2000 for $270 million, but demolished the original towers to make way for Wynn Las Vegas. The Sky Room at the Desert Inn offered panoramic views of the Nevada horizon and was considered an optimal viewing location for the atomic test done by the U.S. government at Nellis Air Force Base. The Stardust was conceived and built by bootlegger Tony Cornero with loans from mobsters Mo Dalitz and Meyer Lansky. Cornero died while playing craps before the construction was completed, but the project went ahead and the Stardust opened on July 2, 1958. At the time of its opening, it was the largest hotel in Las Vegas, had the largest casino in Nevada, and featured its own drive-in theater. In the mid-1970s, the Stardust was the center of a skimming operation for the Chicago mob. Its casino was being secretly run by Frank Lefty Rosenthal without a gaming license. Money was skimmed from the Stardust before an official count of the cash was made for the purpose of state and federal taxes. Rosenthal was also involved with the casino operations at the Fremont Marina and Haciendo Casinos. Enforcer Anthony Tony the Ants Belotro was sent to protect the mob's assets and keep an eye on Rosenthal. The Martin Scorsese film Casino is loosely based on the resort and Rosenthal's life in Las Vegas. Opened on April 19, 1955 by Frank Fishman, the Royal Nevada featured a fountain-like neon sculpture and a huge crown which sat on top of the resort. Launched during a national economic recession, the resort was plagued by financial difficulties from the start. In 1959, the Royal Nevada became the convention center for the more recently opened Stardust Resort and Casino. Built in 1941 by Marion Hicks and J.C. Grayson, this is one of the oldest hotel and casino properties in Las Vegas, and it was downtown's first major resort. In 1945, Bugsy Siegel, Mayor Lansky, Gus Grimbaum, and Mo Sedway bought the property. They later sold it and used the profits to influence builder Billy Wilkerson to accept new partners on a property that would go on to become the Flamingo Las Vegas. This street, created in 1905 and named in honor of Western explorer John C. Fremont, is closely associated with the birth of Las Vegas. The city began with a railroad auction held near the intersection of what is now Fremont and Main Street. Fremont was also the site of many Vegas firsts. It was the city's first paved street in 1925. The Apache Hotel had the first elevator, as well as the first traffic light. The Fremont Hotel was the city's first high-rise and the Golden Nugget was the first casino built and designed to be a casino.